Now we will talk about a model that describes the magnetization curves of uh, single domain particles that have uniaxial anisotropy. So this is the so-called stoner wolfhardt model. So uh, this model describes the magnetization curves of an aggregation of single domain particles with uniaxial anisotropy. So here is the uh, particle that we're considering here. It's an ellipsoidal uh, single domain particle. It has no crystalline or uh, stress anisotropy. You can see that the magnetization uh, makes an angle theta with respect to the easy axis and makes an angle phi with respect to the applied field. And the applied field makes a total angle theta plus phi or alpha with respect to the easy axis. Uh, so, we're going to write down the energy terms uh, for this particle we, and we will minimize it with respect to theta and find out the magnetization curve. So, that is our agenda. Uh, so, we are considering an ellipsoidal single domain particle with no crystal, no intrinsic or extrinsic anisotropy, no crystal or stress anisotropy. So there's only the shape anisotropy. Uh, because it has the ellipsoidal sh shape, it has a major axis and minor axis, so we can call this A, we can call this C, and the easy axis is the uh, major axis of the ellipse. So, uh, by shape anisotropy, the easy axis is y-axis. So now we can write the uniaxial anisotropy energy and I'm going to use CGS units for this uh, discussion. So for the uniaxial anisotropy energy uh, we can write Ea equals uniaxial anisotropy constant Ku multiplied with sine square of the angle magnetization makes with respect to the easy axis. So uh, theta is the angle between uh, ms and easy axis. So, uh, we also have a magnetic field that is applied here. So, let me first uh, take this into a box. This is my anisotropy energy, uh, or more specifically, it's anisotropy energy density, because Ku is a energy density. And there is a magnetic field, H, that is applied at an angle alpha with respect to the easy axis. Okay, now we can write the Zeeman energy. So the Zeeman energy term 
is, I will denote this with E sub Z, uh, minus the dot product of magnetic field with the magnetization, so cosine of the angle between them is cosine phi. So uh, we have this relationship between angles theta plus phi equals to alpha. Now that we have recognized these energy terms, uh, we can talk about the total energy of the system. Then the total energy, we can write as E total, which is shape anisotropy plus the Zeeman energy. So it's going to be equal to KU sine squared theta minus HMS cosine phi, which is cosine alpha minus uh, theta. So this is our total energy that we are supposed to minimize with respect to theta in order to find the uh, magnetization curve. So the equilibrium position uh, for M uh, minimizes the total energy. Uh, so at the same time, what I'm calling magnetization M here is uh, the projection of the uh, magnetization MS uh, with respect to the easy axis. So it's going to be MS cosine theta is the magnetization, no, not with respect to the easy axis, with respect to the field axis. So it's, it should be MS cosine phi or MS cosine alpha minus theta that is the magnetization I'm measuring in the direction of the applied magnetic field. So uh, we can find the equilibrium position for uh, for MS. This is going to minimize the total energy. So if we take a derivative of the total energy with respect to theta, and once again I remind you it is energy density uh, to be more specific, this has to be equal to zero at the uh, minimum point. So the derivative will give me 2ku sine theta cosine theta, and then I will have a uh, cosine turning into a sine will introduce a minus sign here. Minus will become plus, but because I have alpha minus theta, the minus sign in the parentheses will make it minus again. So this will be minus H MS sine alpha minus theta equals to zero. So uh, with this magnetization uh, in mind, which is MS cosine alpha minus uh, theta, that is the projection of the saturation magnetization onto the field axis, we can define uh, the normalized uh, magnetization. Uh, M, lowercase m, is the ratio of capital M to capital MS, and we can define uh, lowercase h as the ratio of applied field to the anisotropy field, and that is HMS divided by 2KU because I remind you the anisotropy field HK is 2KU uh, divided by MS that is in CGS units. So um, it was mu zero. There was a mu zero here, but here we have it. We have this in uh, CGS units. Um, so with that, the magnetization uh, is given by solutions to this equation. Then. the magnetization is given by 
the solutions and before we continue let me check this anisotropy uh, field that we have found earlier it is 2k it was 2k u over mu0 ms so we said mu0 equals to 1 in cgs so it is 2k u over ms so that was right uh, so our equation will be instead of 2k u sine theta cosine theta i will have sine theta cosine theta so i'm dividing it by 2k u and for minus h ms ms divided by 2k u uh, will be uh, or h ms divided by 2k u will be replaced with lowercase h so this will be uh, minus h sine alpha minus theta equals to zero and uh, m m divide capital m divided by ms will be given by cosine alpha minus theta so uh, this is what i'm trying to solve So, for example, here, if you have uh, alpha is equal to 0, you would find that theta is equal to 0 or theta is equal to pi are both stable solutions. So, that means when alpha is equal to 0, the magnetic field is applied along the easy axis, then the magnetization can be parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic field um, because it it just has to lie on the easy axis so that those are both stable solutions so what we would like to know is the magnetic field that causes the switching of the magnetization abruptly from a positive to a negative value so of particular interest are the switching points the coercive field hc where the magnetization switches abruptly from a positive to a negative value so it just uh, changes its direction or rotates by an angle pi so uh, we can find these points by looking at the distinction between stable and anti-stable uh, solutions so these points can be inferred by considering the distinction between stable and unstable solutions. So basically we need to look at uh, curvature, curvature or second derivative will tell us if the solutions are stable or not so we set second derivative of e with respect to theta equal to zero now if we take the second derivative sine theta cosine theta for sine i have cosine so it becomes cosine squared theta the derivative of cosine is minus sine so i get minus sine squared theta and from the derivative of sine alpha minus theta i get plus h cosine alpha minus theta equals to zero and i still have m is equal to uh, cosine alpha minus theta and uh, sine theta cosine theta minus h sine alpha minus theta equals to zero so we're looking for simultaneous solutions of these uh, three equations
Okay, so uh, simultaneous solutions uh, will yield a critical angle, as you can uh, verify mathematically, uh, theta c, such that tangent cube theta c is equal to minus tangent alpha and a critical field hc which is 1 minus 3 over 4 sine square 2 theta c so i leave that to you as an exercise to find uh, to verify that these are indeed simultaneous solutions of these uh, two equations giving me giving us a critical angle and uh, you can see this explicitly for example for alpha is equal to zero if you go back to your equations cosine square theta uh, minus sine square theta plus h cosine theta must be equal to zero so according to this solution tangent cube theta c equals minus tangent alpha theta c must be for example zero and if you look at this equation you find that this equation will be satisfied for a critical angle zero so when the critical angle is zero, you can see that hc is 1 minus 3 over 4 sine square of zero. So hc must be equal to uh, 1. So we find that when theta c is equal to uh, zero, we have hc equals to 1 or h is equal to hk, which is uh, 2ku divided by ms. On the other hand, if uh, if you have alpha equals 0, another possibility is to have theta c is equal to uh, pi. When theta c is equal to pi, you have uh, sine pi divided by cosine pi, which is 0, so tangent cube will be 0, tangent alpha will be 0, so that will be satisfied. And that gives you, on the other hand, a for hc, a sine square of uh, 2 pi, which will be, again, equal to um, 1. So you, you still have the, mag the magnetic field is equal to uh, 2KU over MS, you will have uh, the same uh, critical field value. So, um, if alpha is equal to uh, pi over 2, on the other hand, uh, we have the hard axis loop, and this time uh, we get sine theta cosine theta minus h cosine theta equals to zero cosine theta parenthesis sine theta minus h is equal to zero and that gives you a critical angle of pi over two when h is equal to one so when h is equal to the anisotropy field and we can uh, plot these uh, solutions here for magnetization as a function of magnetic field so we find that the magnetization will switch at a critical field of a uh, minus hk and then it will switch to the positive value at a critical field of plus hk so this is the easy axis so that is alpha is equal to zero uh, degrees case on the other hand if you have uh, alpha is equal to pi over two we see that we have the following 
situation. When alpha is equal to pi over 2, we have uh, the hard axis loop uh, given by this curve. So, uh, easy axis loop is when the magnetic field is applied along the easy axis, alpha is equal to 0 degrees, and hard axis loop is the solution when alpha is equal to pi over 2 uh, degrees. Uh, and we see that the critical field where uh, the behavior changes is the anisotropy field. So let's summarize what we said. We're talking about stoner wolfhart model, which describes the magnetization curves of single domain particles that have uniaxial anisotropy. The magnetization is making an angle theta with respect to the easy axis. Magnetic field is making an angle alpha with respect to the easy axis. And phi is the angle between the saturation magnetization and H. The uniaxial anisotropy energy is Ku sine square theta, where theta is the angle between MS and easy axis. And the Zeeman energy is the uh, minus dot product between magnetization and magnetic field, minus H MS cosine phi. Once again, I'm doing this in CGS units. Okay, the total energy will be Ku sine square theta minus HMS cosine alpha minus theta, y alpha minus theta, because alpha uh, theta plus phi is equal to alpha. And the magnetization is measured in the direction of the magnetic field, so it is the projection of saturation magnetization MS onto the field axis MS cosine alpha. The equilibrium position for MS will minimize the total energy, so I look at the derivative with respect to theta, which gives me uh, 2KU sine theta cosine theta minus HMS sine alpha minus theta, and this must be equal to zero, it must be an extremum point. I define the reduced magnetization M as capital M divided by MS and reduced field H as H divided by HK. And with that definition, the equation becomes sine theta cosine theta minus h sine alpha minus theta equals zero. And the answer we're looking for for uh, the reduced m is cosine alpha minus theta. And you can see if alpha is equal to zero, uh, zero theta equals zero and pi are both stable solutions. Now what we would like to know is exactly when we have switching between two uh, possible uh, stable solutions and this we can find by looking at the second derivative of energy with respect to theta and set it equal to zero. The simultaneous solutions to the first derivative becoming zero and second derivative becoming zero uh, will be given by a critical angle tangent cube theta c equals minus tangent alpha and critical field 1 minus 3 over 4 sine square 2 theta c. For alpha is equal to 0, we have uh, cosine square theta minus sine square theta plus h cosine theta equals to uh, 0. So you can see from this equation uh, that uh, cosine square 0 is uh, 1. Uh, sine square 0 is 0 plus h equals to 0 or h is h critical is equal to minus 1 which means h is equal to minus hk and for theta c equals pi you have um, cosine square pi uh, which is uh, 1 minus uh, 0 plus uh, 1 minus h is equal to 0 or h is equal to 1 which is capital H is equal to hk. So we find these two switching points here and uh, if alpha is equal to pi over 2 on the other hand the, we have the hard axis loop uh, sine theta cosine theta minus h cosine theta equals to uh, 0. So you might, you, might want to, you might want to check this equation so if this is correct um, so we have for the critical angle pi over 2, h is equal to uh, 1, when theta c is equal to uh, pi over 2. On the other hand, h is equal to uh, sine theta uh, as the angle 
uh, changes. Uh, so this reflects itself in the magnetization curve as a line between a minus saturation magnetization and plus saturation magnetization. So this is plus ms minus ms. So for alpha equals to zero degrees, we have abrupt switching between two stable solutions uh, for theta equals zero and theta equals pi at plus minus hk. And for alpha equals pi over two, we have the coherent rotation of the magnetization towards the hard axis or um, uh, away from the easy axis. Uh, and uh, the rotation is completed at a field of plus or minus hk.